I might have shared this with you before, but uh, serving at First Baptist Church of Branson in 1978, I was in the office and uh, the intercom rang and uh, the secretary was trying to get my attention and she said, uh, Rodney, uh, your mom and dad's pastor is on the phone and he needs to speak with you. So I lifted up the receiver and my mom and dad's pastor on the other end said, Rodney, I've got some sad news for you. Uh, your dad was killed in a terrible truck accident this morning. My heart sunk. in 1978. Peabody Coal Company was on strike at that particular time and my dad was a welder for them and so to try to make ends meet for the family my mom and dad they were living by themselves in Calhoun, Missouri at that particular time he was hauling gravel down a blacktop road and as my dad was normally doing he was probably going a little too fast for the load that he had and he didn't make the curve. So the best we can understand, uh, the truck went off the bank, hit the embankment, and we trust that he was instantly killed at that point. That's where his body was. But that an instantaneous moment, because he was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, he was asleep in Christ. Amen. And he went to be with the Lord. He went to be with the Lord. Later on, uh, as he was buried there in Calhoun in the cemetery, on that cold, uh, blistery day that had snow on the ground, my mom decided that uh, we would uh, move his uh, casket to Centralia. That's where his body is today, in the cemetery there in my hometown in Centralia, Missouri. And today, right now, if the wind's blowing there like it might be outside, there's a flag over his grave because he was a veteran. And that cemetery is just covered with huge flags all over that cemetery because of the other veterans that are lying there. Their bodies are lying there in the grave. <coughs> Dayton Haney, Geneva's dad, is another one that's lying there. His body is in that grave and a flag is flying over his place of burial as well too. And Geneva's mother, Ruth, has been buried beside her husband. About a month ago, I stood there in that cemetery. I read this particular passage because my brothers had asked me to conduct my mother's funeral. But it was a day of celebration, my dear friends, because even though my dad's body's there, Geneva's mom and dad's body is in that cemetery, and we were laying my mom's body in the ground as well too. We knew within our hearts it was a day of celebration because all four of those were with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we want to rejoice about today as we approach this table this morning, a time of celebration. Paul says in verse 13, do not grieve like the rest of the world does who have no hope. That's my first point. If you fall asleep in Jesus, if you know Jesus Christ as a Savior and the Lord of your life today, we have hope. We have hope that's different from the rest of the world. You see, a lot of times, those that died in the armed services, some of our loved ones, unfortunately, that have died without Jesus, they died without hope. But those that have gone on with Jesus and have fallen asleep in Him, and those of us that know Jesus this morning, when God calls me home, I have hope because of the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. And we're celebrating that today and recognizing that today in just a few moments. Jesus hung on that cross. He suffered, he bled, he died. He was buried, but praise the Lord, he was resurrected from the dead. And we can rejoice in that today along with what Paul is saying here. So we have hope. Verse 14 emphasizes that. It says, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Fallen asleep in him. And that's a hope and the victory that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the bodies of our loved ones are lying in the grave. But if they know Jesus and if they fell asleep in Jesus at the time of death, they're with the Lord Jesus Christ today if they have believed in him. 
So my question is this morning, are you ready for the trumpet call of God? Are you ready for the trumpet call of God? Look with me in verses 15 and 16. It says, according to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. You remember that parable of the ten virgins in Matthew the 25th chapter? There were five that were wise. They had their lamps full, and they were ready to light that lamp. But there were five that were foolish, Jesus shares this parable, that were not prepared for the bride's, bridegroom's coming. Now the whole setting for that is that whenever the bridegroom was ready and had everything ready, the house was built, he'd already engaged, they were already espoused together as couples, and so he was preparing everything. And so when it was ready, then he left his home and gathered his crowd together and they would begin to march down through the streets of their city and others would join them. And so Jesus is portraying that parable of marriage, if you will. And he says there were five that were wise waiting for the bridegroom to come. But there were five that were foolish that were not ready for the bridegroom. And so when the bridegroom came on that wedding day, the five that were ready joined him and proceeded on into the wedding feast. But the five that were foolish, that were not prepared, went off to find oil for their lamps. That's a perfect illustration of what I'm emphasizing this morning. There is a time of separation in life. And those that do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior will be separated for eternity from Jesus Christ and for, from us that know Jesus as a Savior and the Lord of their life. You see, the five that were wise entered with the bridegroom. And the five that were left behind went to the door and knocked and said, let us come in. But they could not enter because they weren't ready when the bridegroom came. When the bridegroom came. Are you ready for the bridegroom's return? That's Jesus Christ we're talking about. That's Jesus Christ. And Paul alludes to that here in this particular text as we have looked at it this morning. Those that are dead in Christ, those that are asleep in Jesus, will rise first. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, are we ready for that? When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved on earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. How about you? Are you ready? I am. I am. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. I'll be there. What a grand and glorious time that's going to be. Some of our loved ones are already experiencing that. They've already entered into their eternal reward. Just like my mom about five weeks ago when my son called me on the phone and said, Dad, Grandma just went to be with the Lord. So it was a time of celebration when I stood there at the graveside and when I read this particular passage because I knew that was just her body that was laying in that casket and I was going to lay it in the ground in behalf of the family. Paul alludes to that. Look with me there in verse 17. Paul says this. He says, After that, meaning when the trumpet sounds and the Lord Jesus Christ comes back and the dead in Christ rise from the grave, their bodies rise from the grave. He says, after that, 
we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the air to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord just for a short period of time. No, forever. We'll be with the Lord forever. You see, folks, that's the hope and the victory that we have. When that trumpet sounds, Donnie and I reflected on that this morning as he came down to visit me in the office before coming up here for worship. He said he and Lily were there at the house, and for some reason the Lord laid upon his heart, Lily, what would happen if the Lord Jesus Christ came back this instantaneous moment? That trumpet could sound today. It could sound while I'm still preaching. You with me? I mean, we've got to be ready for that. Because when the trumpet sounds, that says that the Lord Jesus Christ is breaking the eastern sky and he is coming back in the air, the scripture says. And when that happens, then the dead that are asleep in Jesus, their bodies will be resurrected from the dead, reuniting their physical body with their spiritual soul that is with the Lord Jesus Christ today. And then those of us that are still alive at that time will be caught up. I can't even imagine what that's going to be looking like, what that's going to be like, outside of what Paul says here in the scriptures. I mean, I might be driving home this afternoon back to Maysville, and all of a sudden, however I'm going to hear that trumpet, I'm going to hear it. And that's a sign that Jesus is coming back, and Geneva and I will get out of that old impala, and we'll be on our way. And we'll be joining some of you this afternoon if the, if the trumpet sounds. And the hope is we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ forever and forever and forever. Now, even as a preacher of the gospel, that still perplexes me. <laughs> Eternity is beyond my understanding. But God has it all in control, I guarantee you. And you and I will be with him if we know the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior and the Lord of our life. And we will be with Jesus and our loved ones that have fallen asleep in him forever and forever. That's why we're observing this table here this morning. Because this table represents the sacrifice that Jesus offered for you and for me on the cross. To give us hope to give us victory over sin and the death and the grave itself. Because we too, just like Jesus was resurrected from the dead, we will be resurrected if we die before he comes back to be with him forever and forever. Not because of anything that we have done outside of faith, but because of the work that he did on the cross as he suffered, as he bled, and as he died. And my dear friends, that is offered to anybody and everybody that will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, recognizing their sins and admitting to themselves that they're a sinner in need of Christ as Savior. And I hope and pray today that if you're here sitting in a pew or listening online, that you have that hope in Jesus Christ, this instantaneous moment. But if not, you've got that opportunity to decide for the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask Amy to go to the piano and begin to softly play as we prepare our hearts for this time of observance of the Lord's table. But it's an opportunity, if you do not know Jesus as your Savior, to step out this morning and walk down to the front and accept Jesus Christ as the Savior and the Lord of your life. Join me in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the fact that you died on the cross. You suffered and bled and died shedding your precious blood because of that sacrifice that you offered there on the cross. We have the hope of salvation if we will only recognize that we are a sinner in need of Christ as Savior. And Lord, I know that there are many here this morning as well as those that are listening online right now that already know Jesus Christ as a Savior and the Lord of their life. But if there's someone yet in the sound of my voice that does not know Jesus, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit is working on their heart right now and that they would reach out to Jesus by faith and simply say, Lord Jesus, I know that you died for me on the cross. I know that I'm a sinner in need of Christ as Savior. 
And right now, I just, by faith, reach out and accept the work that you did for me on the cross. Lord, we give you praise for who you are and what you do within our lives. And we ask these matchless things in the matchless name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and amen.